So, good day everyone, my name is Graphics. We are into parallel connection. Now we should know that the current flowing in through a parallel circuit flows differently into different resistor. Each resistor has its own current. For instance, let us take this illustration. If I have this this way, I have a resistor, resistor 1, I have another resistor, resistor 2, I have another one, resistor 3, now connected to a battery. This is positive, this is negative, this is R2 and this is R3. When this voltage source produce a current, hmm? let's look at it very well. So, the current will flow through this part and come here. Let's say this is where the current is I. Now, you get to this branch here like a node here it divides some will flow through here some will flow through here and some will flow through here so let's say the one flowing through here is called i1 flowing through r1 and the one flowing through here is i2 flowing through r2 and the one flowing through here is what i3 Going through R3, right? Now, because of different currents are flowing through each resistor, it says these resistors are in parallel. But one funny thing about a, a, a parallel connection is that what all the currents are different, while the voltage are the same. So the voltage across each resistor is the same, right? So let's take an illustration. So what we are, well, we are. Um, what we are looking on to here is we are all calculating for current. So we know that my I total or my I equivalent is equals to I1 plus I2 plus I3 because we are changing the current flow in this circuit. So recall Recall, we know that according to Ohm's law, V is equal to what I R, right? And if I make I is the formula, my I will be equal to what V over R. This Ohm's law here. So, since I have this, anyway I see I, I place V over R. So this will give me V all over what? R, right? So V over R is R equivalent, but I won't put V equivalent. Is equals to reason is that the voltage in each are the same. Well, let me just put my V equivalent here. So is equals to my V one over what R one plus my V two over what R two plus my V three over what. R3. Now we know that V1 is equal to what? V2 is equal to what? V3. The voltage in its parallel connection are the same. So I always obtain that as what? Is equal to what? V. So anyway, I see them, I will be using V to represent them each. So I have my V into bracket 1 over R equivalent equals to v1 into bracket 1 over r1 plus v2 open bracket 1 over what r2 plus v3 
into bracket 1 over what? R3. So if I factorize my V, so I might just write V now, I might not use V1 also, but my V in 1 all over R1, R equivalent, will give me V into bracket 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So I factorized. So this V will equal this G. Is that okay? So now I'm left with 1 all over what? R equivalent, which will be equal to, which will be equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So if I successfully look for the LCM, I will left with R1, R2, R3 is at the LCM. So R1 in R1 is remaining R2, R3 times 1. We'll be having our R2, R3. Plus R2 in R2, this will give me R1 and what? R3. R3 in R3, meaning R1, R2 times 1 will give me R1, R2. So, one thing you need to understand is that if I have, let me just deviate a little bit. If I have A all over B is equal to C all over D. If I make my numerator, my denominator become numerator, like saying B all over A in the left hand side, I must surely make my numerator become my denominator in the right hand side. So it will be D over C. Are you with me? If I change this, I must change this. So if I write my R equivalent over 1, this will give me R1, R2, R3 all over R2, R3 plus R1, R3 plus R1, R2. So anything over 1 will give you that thing. So we have R, the equivalent resistance of the parallel connection will be R1, R2, R3 all over R1, R2, R2, R3 plus R1, R3 plus R1, R2, right? This is what we have it. So this is in a parallel connection. This is how you calculate the equivalent resistance. All good. So, for a resistance that have just two resistors, it will be R1, R2, all over R1 plus R2. It's for resistance that have what two resistors. So we should have this in our mind. So let's take an example in the next video. Now look at this example. I have a resistor that current is flowing and when the current gets here it divides. So it divides into two. We have let's call this to be I1 and here is what? To be I2. I want to know the current that is going through the two ohm resistor. I want to know the current that's entering into the R2 resistor. So we are looking for I1 and I2. So before you are for I1 and I2, you must know what is the I total first. Right? So what you do is this. Since both of them are in parallel because two different currents are entering, you are going to say that um, my R1, or you can say R A represents with R A, is equal to what? R1 parallel to what? R2. I'm representing this two with R A now. So it means that my R A is equal to what? R1 times what? R2 all over R1 plus R2. That's the resistor in what? In parallel. So this will now give us my R A. R1 is what? R1 is 2 times R2 is what? Is 3 all over what? 2 plus 3. So my ROA here will be giving us what? 6 over 5. 
So my RA will be what? So 6 divided by 5 is 1.2. Now we're having 1.2 ohms. Now if I now redraw my diagram again, I'll have something like this. I'll have a new resistor. Right? But this is my new resistor now will be called what? RA. Which is equals to what? Um, this is equals to what? Um, 1.2 ohms. Right? So since it's the only resistor that is remaining, I can also call it my what? My RO equivalent. Because that's the only resistor that is remaining. So this will not be um, the current, the battery source that is here. Then this. So we'll say V is equals to 1 and 20. We're looking for the current here, right? That is my I. So we know according to Ohm's law, V is equals to what? I R according to what? Ohm's law. Right? So from here, my V is equals to what? I R. So my total I, we're talking about the I now. I total will be what? V all over R. Can we divide both sides? We have been that. So this is now what's my V? My V is 20 all over what? The R equivalent, which is what? 1.2. This is the R equivalent here. The I equivalent here. So my I total now, or the I equivalent, will now give me 20 over 1.2. So 20 divided by 1.2 will give me 16.67. 16.67 amperes. So this is my I total. This is the current that will flow. The current that will be flowing here is 16.67. Right? So what we'll do here is this. After I successfully calculated 16.67 here, I'm going to look at how the 16.67 will be divided across the two ohm resistor. So that will make me start using current divider rule right so using the current divider rule divider rule to calculate for i1 and what i2 so this is what this is how you go about it this is R1 heavy. I want to replace my R1 with what? I my R A with what? I1. So if I do that, where is my I1 passing in through? My I1 passing through R R1 ohm. So I'm going to remove the R1 ohms here. I replace it with what? My I total. So multiply by my R2 all over what? R1 plus R2. This is my I total here. So in doing that, my I total is 16.67 times my R2 is 3, all over what? 2 plus 3. So this will now be, um, if you do that, this will now be 16.37 times 3, times 3, times 50 divided by 5 so that is 10 so we have 50 divided by 5 so my i1 is equal to what 10 amperes so similarly similarly you do the same thing for the next one you come here you look for i2 you replace your ra with i2 right then you ask yourself, where is I2 flowing through? I2 is flowing through where? I2 is flowing through R2. So it means that what? You remove your R2 from that equation there. So you remove, your R, you remove this R2 and replace it with I total. So I have my IR1 times what? My I total all over R1 plus what? R2. So, and this will give us what? So be equals to my R1 is uh, 2 times 16.67 
all over what? And 3 plus 2 or 2 plus 3. So this will now give us what? So this will now give us 2 times 16.67. 2 times 16.67. I is 33.34 divided by 5. Are we? So that is 33.34 divided by 5. So we're having that. So from here, so we divide it, we're having this. So you can say this is 50.1 because 16.37 times, times 1 times um, 3 will be 50.1. 15.1 divided by 5 will give you 10.02. So approximately 10. This is what we have. So the current flowing through each of those resistors is this. So thank you very much for watching. If you add these two currents together, you realize that you are having the total current here.